thanks for giving me this opportunity to give a public speech at this great event to let you know about me and our team and what we are doing. It's always good to connect with people who are also interested in Sui. And today, I, I'd like to talk about an open source software called SuiKit. SuiKit is a toolkit for interacting with the Sui network using TypeScript. So before we jump right in, I'd like to give you a brief introduction about our team. We are called Scallop. And just, just as Harrison mentioned this morning, we are a team that has joined the Builder House from Denver to Vietnam and now Hong Kong. And down this one, yes, our, down the left corner of that picture is, a, is our picture at the Lisbon Builder House. Yeah. And our aim is to build a lending and borrowing protocol that fully leveraged the potential of the Sui network. And on the right corner of this slice, there is, this is a snapshot of our web interface. Okay, so this is a brief introduction for our team and who we are. Okay, let's jump right in. So, so when we build Sui Kids, uh, as we are building the lending protocol, we, we find we, we need to provide a SDK for our expert users. And when we build the SDK, we find, we find it necessary to have to have a base layer for our SDK. So, so that's why we build SwiftKit to serve as a base layer for Scala TypeScript SDKs. And at the same time, from my experience, I often found out that different developers often ask the same questions that relates to how we can interact with the Sui network. That some question repeated uh, appears again and again. So we think it's a good idea to put those solutions together so that it will save the time for the communities and make it more efficient to de deliver a product. And finally, as we know, Sui is a very well-designed and high-performance L1 blockchain. But for most of the developers out there, the concept is relatively new. Many of them are not familiar with what Sui is and what's the design behind it. So we'd like to have, have a tool to let those, to make it easy. It's very easy to interact with the same Sui network, even for the beginners, so that we can onboard more developers to build our work, to build the, to build on the Sui network and make the ecosystems better, which would both benefit every one of us. And so let's see what Sui Kid, what efforts have Sui Kid made to achieve these goals. So we've published SwiftKit as a public NPM package, which you can install and import in your code to use. So with this, with this a few lines of code, you, you can start interacting with the Sui network. You just import this SwiftKit class and it initialize with your credentials. And here I put just a secret key out and you can also provide your memoric words. And we we want to make it simple to use so that we we hide some complex we abstract the complexity from the code so that every object every parameter you're passing is actually is just a simple javascript object such as strings and numbers you, you don't need to care about what's the type whether it's object whether it's address or it's a, some kind of u u64 or some some other complex concept behind the BCS data structure. It's just pretty straightforward. And then here you can see this this is how you can do the transfers with the with the three kit SDKs. You just pass in the recipient and the, the amount you want to transfer and call the transfer three method. And also we, we also support transfer to multiple recipients in just one call with this transfer three to many to many 
functions, you pass in the recipients and the amounts that you want to transfer. So this is this is a, the concept behind the three kit. We want to make the API as intuitive as possible. Okay. So except for the transfer scenarios, we are we also enca encapsulating many other common cases that uh, that is frequently used by many pro by many projects, such as you can stake sway by specifying the amount and the uh, validator's address, calling the stake sway method, and making move calls, and providing the signatures and arguments, or even quarter the on-chain data. Okay, on-chain data. This is actually pretty straightforward. You just get the balance. But for, but for some cases that we haven't covered yet, there is a default way you can pro, you can fall back to the raw provider from the Mr. Labs SDK and do whatever the provider has to can do for you, such as you can call the events by getting this provider and then <clears throat> passing those parameters from the, from the events. Okay. And so, except for the basic features that we encapsulated for easy to use, we we add an additional features that is friendly to those who need to manage multiple accounts and use them to interact with the stream network as a in a program. So this is how this is a feature. It's called HD Wallet support. It's follow the Sleep 0010 and BIP39 standard. <clears throat> So you notice here that uh, the previous method, they can actually accept an extra parameter. It's called the derived pass params. What does this mean? This is actually a, a, a pass that you can pass into the functions. If you, pa if you pass into the pass into the function, it will use the, use the account that's uh, derived from that pass to sign and, tra and send the transaction under that on the that account instead of using the default that is sitting at the zero 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 pass. So this is so this is very useful for the for those people who need to do multiple accounts interaction in the pro programmatically. Okay, so <clears throat> after all this feature introduction, I, I thought it would be a great great idea to give you a feeling about what 3Kit can do. And I, and here I will show you a practical example. It's a, it's a classical example of, uh, it's a classical problem in DeFi uh, using flash loan. I think some of you might be familiar with this kind of, with this idea. And so by flash loan, I mean, it's, it's kind of loan that, sh that need to be repaid in in a single transaction, okay. So here is a case that we there is a background that we are going to talk about for this problem. So, so so suppose we have two, suppose we have two modules. This flash loan lender module, okay. It has two methods: the flash loan and the repay flash loan. And for the flash loan method, it actually can <clears throat> pass in the amount you want to borrow and it will return you the, the coin you borrow and the hot potato object, it's a loan, we call it a loan. And then payback loan, it will receive the debt, the coin, the debt you pay back and the, also the hot potato loan. It will verify that whether you have paid enough for this flash loan, okay? So this is a flash loan lend lender module and this is, a, and on the right side, we have a DAX what what Dex can do? Dex actually is a place where you can swap tokens, right? So here here is a Dex where you can swap token A to token B. It has two methods. Swap A, it accepts two parameters: it's a Dex pool and the other is a, is coin B. You pass in coin B, you get coin A, and the ratio is one to one. But in swap B, the ratio <laughs> when you swap A to coin B, the ratio is one to two. So so here is we can see an obvious opportunity so that we can make some arbitrary to make some profits with a flash loan. So this is a background for this problem. Okay. So traditionally, how, how we do this arbitrary? 
for example, on Ethereum or other chains, the way the way is that we should write a write a contract that bundles these five steps. So, I'm sorry, the next slide. So this is a strategy here. Uh, I I think it's better I can explain this uh, a bit more. So the step one is that we should borrow one big co one coin B from the flash lender, and the second step is that. This is that we then first convert it to com coin A, and this time it's one to one. And on step three, there's a method that let us convert to coin B, but the ratio is higher. We convert from one coin A to two coin B. So the result is that we start from one coin B and we end up with two coin B. So we made a profit of net worth of one coin B. So these are the process, or the strategy behind how we could do the arbitrary with the flash loan. Ah, so, so, so we are not on the next slide yet. So, the, so the default way is that we we should we would write a contract that bundles these five steps in a single method and publish that that module on the net on the blockchain, so that we call that method to trigger the arbitrary process and then get the profit so but but now uh, but now since we are on three we we have a better solution for this and this is a great feature that's uh, already been already been mentioned by the previous talks from alex it's called the uh, programmable programmable transaction and i think it's uh, one of my favorite features for the string network uh, so next let's see how we can use three kit to and combine with a programmable transaction to do the same thing but this time actually what's different from the previous solution is that we don't need to write a single line of contract and we just use a pure typescript to do other transactions okay so this is these are the five five steps so <clears throat> except for the three kit you need to import from the SDKs, you, you need to act in, import extra instance called 3TX block. So for with this, actually, you can start using the programmable transaction features with 3Kit. But so here's a way how you can combine all those five steps together into a one transaction to make to make the whole arbitrary process and so the first step is to make a flash loan for coin B and you know, call this method, I add the move call. And step two, you also call in the DAX, add another move call. And step three, you swap, swap again and pay back the flash loan. And then the final step is, is you send back your profit to yourself and let the three kit to execute the bundled transaction. So, so the point is that this this bundle transaction is kind of different from the traditional SDK in interaction because it's atomic, meaning that it either fails or is success. So none of this will be partial failure. So it, it's a very uh, nice features from the from the string network. So so this is how you can do this programmable transaction with string kit. But I think it's much simpler than if you want to just use the raw SDK from the Mr. Labs, and okay, so this is how we you can do the programmable transactions. And last is that <clears throat> actually we already start in we already start using StreetKit to build our own SDKs. We have an SDK for our expert users. Those expert users want to integrate want to integrate one of our maybe operations into their own workflows. For example, they may have some other workflows. They take some coins from other place and then lend, they make some lendings or borrowings on our platform and do something else. So we, we, we just integrate StreetKit and our SDK to let them do this. For the, on the right side of this, we just provide a core and a send way to for normal users. But for expert users, actually, we provide a advanced way so that we can export a transaction builder to let them integrate the pro programmable 
part in the process, in the workflow. So this is how we build, how we integrate Swiki into our SDK. And the last is, uh, is our expectation for the Swiki is that we see this as a long-term plan because we are we are already integrated three kit into our workflow, and we plan to update this three kit as the as the rich releases of the three network. And this is a open source software. I, I, I welcome, I strongly welcome you guys. And to if you want to use three kit, I welcome you to provide feedbacks and even make pull requests if you feel that some common use cases need to be added into this. Uh, uh, open source software. So that's the my introduction about the three kits. Okay. So now actually three kit is already ready to use. It, it can't it's up, updated with the latest SDK and the three releases. Those those are the links you can scan to get more information about three kits. Okay. Okay. Thank you. That's my introduction.